Hi all, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we are covering one of my absolute favourite topics in the lore, a Primarch interacting with the Emperor. But even better than that, one of the few written very first meetings between father and son. Corvus Corax, Primarch of the Raven Guard, meets the Emperor of Mankind for the very first time. This is going to be a good one. Before we begin, the events we are going to be discussing today are from the Horus Heresy novel Deliverance Lost by Gav Fulp. And it's a really good read. I really do recommend this one. And as always, I really recommend you read the novel for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, but we help to support Games Workshop and the great Black Library that way too. Because without them, well, we don't have all this fantastic lore to discuss with each other. I will post a link to the book on the Black Library's website in the description for those that are interested. But with that said, let's jump straight in. They moved like soldiers. Corvus fought as he watched the ex-prisoners spreading out across the Ferrocrete. A few years ago, they had been gangsters and philosophers, thieves and agitators. Now they were his army, well drilled and highly motivated. He knew much of the credit was his, but in turn he owed a lot to whoever had given him the gifts he possessed. People listened to him without doubt, and he had an innate understanding of fighting. To direct an attack or devise a strategy came as naturally to Corvus as breathing. Some of the men were pointing upwards and shouting. A craft appeared beyond the field barrier, twin trails of plasma bright against the dark sky as it descended through the barrier high above. Corvus saw that it was shaped like a great mechanical bird of prey, golden in colour, with angled wings that stretched back like those of a diving hawk. It hovered for a moment, and the plasma engines dimmed as the pilot switched to anti-gravatic impellers to land the craft. Falling slowly, the shuttle came to rest at the centre of the apron, within the inner circle marked there in the red paint. Corvus looked through the canopy and was surprised to see that the cockpit was empty. He suddenly felt a hint of suspicion at the seemingly unmanned craft. Perhaps it was loaded with explosives, a desperate act of petty revenge from one of the guildmasters. Okay, small thing here, but I love the fact that the Emperor isn't just physically piloting the ship. He's just, you know, I don't know I'm not going to bother with that, I'm just going to use my psychic power to do that. He hasn't even brought anyone with him. No pilot, no custodes. That shows a great deal of confidence, or faith, that this meeting, his son for the first time, is, is going to go well. Ready weapons, Gapion called out. The men raised an assortment of slug throwers, shotguns and las rifles, looted from dead guards and captured weapons lockers. A door opened in the side of the shuttle beneath the right wing, directly opposite Corvus. Light spilled from within as a gangplank extended from the craft with a clang. A shadow appeared in the light, waiting for a moment at the entryway before emerging into view. Whispers spread through the men, of surprise and amazement. Guns quivered in shaking hands and there were clatters as some of the soldiers dropped their weapons. Seemingly without prompt, the men lowered themselves to the ground, putting aside their weapons and bowing their heads. Some prostrated themselves, whispering fervently. Corvus glanced at Gapion beside him. The lieutenant was on his knees too. There were tears in his eyes and an expression of joy etched on his slack-lipped face. So majestic, Gapion muttered. What glory! What power! Confused, Corvus directed his attention to the man descending the landing ramp. He seemed unremarkable. In fact, he seemed so unremarkable that Corvus could not discern a single distinguishing feature about him. He was of average height, with dark hair, and moderately tanned skin. In build he was neither bulky nor slight, 
but of normal proportion, slightly larger than the malnourished men who now abased themselves before him. He was dressed in a robe of white linen, free of ornamentation except for a necklace of gold on which hung a pendant fashioned in the shape of an eagle with outspread wings, a lightning bulk in its claws. The man's eyes were as indistinct as the rest of him, neither blue nor green, nor grey nor brown, but a flecked mixture of all. Yet there was something in those eyes that reached into Corvus and touched upon his inner self. There was wisdom and kindness there, and antiquity that was very humbling, but also disconcerting. And here we have Korax laying eyes on his father for the first time since his birth. Before the Chaos Gods whisked him and his brothers away, Korax seeing the man behind the power. The human who is still at the core of what the Emperor has become. I've always thought that out of all the Primarchs, Korax bears the greatest likeness physically to the Emperor, with his long dark hair and his complexion. We know that Korax has a slightly more white complexion in the lore, but often when you see him in the novels, he has more of a, a tanned look about him, and that really symbolizes very similar to the Emperor to me. Korax feeling the wisdom and kindness inside the man before him, and the line of antiquity that was very humbling but also disconcerting. The Emperor is virtually ageless, ageless beyond measure. The things he has seen, the wisdom he has, Korax is right, it must be very humbling, but also a little unnerving encountering him for the first time. And at the same time as Corvus saw this, he also witnessed the arrival of a demigod. Wreathed in golden light and dressed in white finery that burned with its own light, he saw a stern face set with two golden orbs for eyes, piercing in their intensity searing into the core of his being. The stranger seemed to tower over the kneeling men, borne forwards upon a carpet of undulating flames. It was impossible to reconcile the two images. The supreme, grandiose king of men approached Corvus, but all the while the slight, unimposing man flickered within. Finally Corvus's mind could fight no longer against the glamour and he saw the new arrival as his followers did, and was filled by an overwhelming urge to pay obeisance to this stranger. And here we have the other side to the coin. Not just the human father to Korax, the leader of a race, the most powerful being in the galaxy, the emperor of mankind. He fought that instinct. He had waged a war so that his people would now bow before another man. The newcomer's effect on Corvus's men unsettled the rebel leader. He stared with narrowed eyes, unable to discern which image was true and which was illusion, as the stranger paced slowly and confidently across the ferrocrete. Who are you? Corvus demanded. What have you done to my men? The stranger looked around at the guerrilla fighters regarding him with adoration seeming to Corvus slightly nonplussed at the scene. His blonde hair fell in waves across his shoulders as he turned his head, spilling like fiery liquid. Another wave of majesty swept over Corvus and again the guerrilla commander had to make a physical effort not to fall to his knees. An occupational hazard, said the man, returning his attention to Corvus. He fixed the rebel leader with a stare his eyes now permanently golden like bottomless wells of light. There was a glow of power beneath his skin, as if the stranger's flesh were embers masked behind thin paper. Corvus experienced a momentary fluttering in his breast and a knot of anxiety in his gut, a fraction of the effect the man was having on his warriors. A great point of note here, the Emperor is not intentionally throwing out this power to make them worshipping him. It's just him. The power exudes from him, unless he makes a concentrated effort to disguise it. Korax as a Primarch is far greater being than a mere human, but still, even he struggles to not give in to this effect. 
I am the emperor of mankind. I created you. Hearing these words was like a veil lifting from Corvus's eyes. He saw the emperor as he had seen him before, watching the growing infant through the canopy of an incubator. His face had been distorted by curved plates of glass, but the features were unmistakable. The guerrilla leader had long pondered the face from his earliest memories, wondering to whom it belonged. Now vague recollections became sharp memory. Corvus recalled the noise and lights and booming voices that had engulfed him, remembered the surge of power and disorientation as unnatural forces had borne him away from the place of his creation. Now he saw and knew for certain the face of his father, the only individual worthy of Corus's unwavering obedience. He lowered himself to one knee in deference, understanding that the stranger spoke the truth. Here was the master of mankind. What do you call this place? The emperor asked. It used to be called Lysias, Corvus replied. Now we know it as Deliverance. A good name, said the emperor. Please rise, my son. We have much to talk about. Here again, we have the Emperor referring to a Primarch as his son. There's no pretense here. This is the very first meeting and Corex is already down on one knee in deference to the master of mankind. The Emperor could quite easily have said, right tall 19, we've got work to do, or warlord 19, whatever he wanted to refer to him as, just number 19. But no, he calls him son. And that's because I believe he truly means it. This is a father meeting his son. Yes, a created son, but from his own genetic material. The emperor most certainly has different relationships with his primarchs. A very fatherly one with, say, Vulcan and Korax. Two, a very distant and cold one, such as with Angron and even Lorgar, which is a very human thing. The guy's got 18 sons who were created to help him conquer the galaxy. Yet as always, his flaws always seem come to come back to the human essence. It's also worth noting that this was written about four years before ADB's Master of Mankind novel, which gave us a very different version of the Emperor. It's one of the double-edged swords of having multiple authors on a series. It's great you get different interpretations of characters seen from different eyes. But sometimes you have to ask if that's always for the best. For me it wasn't, but I know a lot of people prefer this colder version of the Emperor. And they did. Corvus withdrew from his men and took the Emperor to his quarters, an old guard station in the mid-levels of the Black Tower. Corvus sought out food and drink for his guest ashamed at the meagre fare he could offer his father. The Emperor waved away his concerns, sitting on the rough bunk that served as a chair for the massive rebel commander. Do you recognize me? The Emperor asked. His expression was hard to read. Corvus detected a hint of surprise behind the question. Whatever glamour had befallen the gorillas had a lesser effect on Corvus, and the man before him was definitely the same as from his old memories. As if from a dream, he replied. Interesting, said the Emperor, with a smile and a nod. They spoke about many things, though Corvus was bursting with questions. They spoke about many things, though Corvus was bursting with questions about the Emperor, himself and the wider galaxy, he found that he did most of the talking, answering constant queries from the Emperor concerning what had taken place on Deliverance and Kiavir. Corvus furnished him with all the information he could concerning the history of the star system and the war for freedom he had waged over recent years. Corvus paced the room while he spoke, animated and energized. The Emperor sat on the bunk and nodded occasionally, in understanding rather than approval, in fact, he showed no judgment of any kind. 
no condemnation or endorsement of Corvus's actions. He listened intently to everything Corvus told him, sometimes asking exceptionally pertinent questions about the tiniest of details, wishing to absorb everything about Corvus's life. But there is one piece missing that I cannot answer, Corvus said, finally voicing what his heart yearned to know since his first discovery. How is it that I came to be here? The Emperor's mood darkened and his face grew grim. For the first time, he took a sip from the glass of water Corvus had given to him hours earlier. Eyes haunted. There is another universe, he said. It lies alongside ours, part of it, but also separated. It is called the Warp. I know of it, said Corvus. Though I have not seen it, I hear that ships can use to travel to distant stars. Some of the machines of Kiovar are said to harness the energy of the warp. It is a universe of boundless power, and can be accessed, as you say, by ships and by the minds of special men that we call psychers, the Emperor continued. Like our galaxy, the warp is inhabited by creatures not of flesh but thought. Sometimes they hunger for our material lives, wishing to feast on our mortality. You and your brothers were taken from me by Denzians of the Warp before you were ready. Brothers? Corvus was excited by the prospect, pushing aside the questions that the Emperor's answers had prompted. Though he had made many friends amongst the prisoners of Lysias, always Corvus had been aware of his otherness and when they had started to call him saviour, any hope of normal relationships had ended. There were others like him filled Corvus with hope again. Yes, you have brothers, said the Emperor, smiling at his son's delight. Seventeen of them. You are the Primarchs, my finest creations. Here we see the simple human emotions of both these beings so far above the rest of humanity. Firstly, the resentment of the Emperor when he discusses the scattering of the Primarchs, and then Korax's excitement at the possibility of having brothers, other beings like him, to finally have normal relationships, and the Emperor's happiness at seeing his son's reaction to finding out about his brothers. All genuine human reactions. Seventeen? Corvus asked, confused. I remember that I was number 19. How can that be so? The Emperor's expression grew bleak, filled with deep sorrow. He looked away as he replied. The other two, he said. That is a conversation for another day. Where are my brothers now? Are they with you? You and the other Primarchs were snatched from me by strange powers of the warp, thrown across the galaxy on unnatural tides. That is how you came to rest beneath a glacier moon. Yes, I have seen what befell you, learning your life the moment I laid eyes upon you. The rumour of you, of a magnificent being who led a rebellion here, has travelled farther than you realise, and it was word of this that attracted my attention. Your brothers, those I have found, were similarly scattered to far-flung worlds, like you, they are all great warriors and leaders, and that was my gift to you. You are supreme commanders with intellect and physical ability unmatched by anything in the mass of humanity. I engineered you from my own genetic structure to be my sons and my lieutenants in the Great Crusade. Again, a small point by the Emperor doesn't just say lieutenants, to be my sons and my lieutenants. Of course, you could say he said that to ensure his loyalty, but the guy's already been down on one knee in homage. I don't think the Emperor's worried about that. What is this crusade? How many of my brothers have you found? Most of them, replied the Emperor. I have vast armies, the Legiones Astartes. As you are crafted from me, so they are created from you. The Primarchs are the generals of those armies, 
leading humanity's reconquest of the galaxy. The long night, the age of strife has ended. The remnants of the old empires smolder out in the darkness. The dying coals of humanity almost smothered by the dark. The Great Crusade fans the flames into life, bringing with it reason to drive out superstition. Enlightenment to replace barbarism. With your help, I will unite humanity and lead mankind to rule the stars. It was so much to take in, but Corvus knew it to be true. Not only the words of the Emperor seemed certain, the idea of what he described meshed with much deeper feelings. Knowing he was a Primarch, that he had been created to fight and to command, explained much that Corvus had never understood about himself. On a level that he understood in his spirit and was encoded into every cell of his body, Corvus knew what he was. I swear my loyalty to you, said Corvus, sinking to one knee in front of the Emperor. He met the Emperor's gaze and felt elation, like no victory had given him before. I am your son, your Primarch, and your will shall be my command. That is good, said the Emperor. I have an army waiting for you. They are the Raven Guard, highly decorated and distinguished in my campaigns already. When you are ready, you will assume command of the Legion. I am not ready now, Corvus said, having been elated and then deflated by the Emperor's words. Not yet, my son, said the Emperor, but soon you will emerge to join your brothers and take your place at my side and at the head of the Raven Guard. First though, tell me of Kiavar. What are your intentions? To bring peace to both the world and its moon, and to heal the wounds of the past, said Corvus. With your help, I will succeed. Peace is the hardest goal to achieve, said the Emperor. Victory, the cessation of war, the demilitarization of our opponents, these we can obtain with might of arm. Peace, that is an altogether different beast. Corvus frowned but nodded slowly. The Emperor sipped from his glass, his gaze unmoving. Tell me again, then tell me of your wounds you and your warriors inflicted upon this world, and of the peace you would bring to it with my help. So there we have it, Korax's first meeting with his father, the Emperor of Mankind. And a great comment to end it on, peace is the hardest goal to achieve. Peace is an altogether different beast. You know, showing the Emperor understands the difference between just conquering a people and achieve, achieving a true lasting peace. That's not something that's always considered when we talk about the Emperor of Mankind and he's plans for the human race. As you guys know, I enjoy these human moments with Primarchs the most, and Korax has always seemed one of the more human Primarchs, with all the strengths and flaws that that brings. And he's always seemed to have one of the more closer relationships with the Emperor as a result. Here the Emperor seems genuinely happy in his meeting with Korax, showing his happiness at Korax's excitement at having brothers the interest at wanting to know as much detail as possible from his past without being judging. And then further on in the heresy, we have the Emperor allowing Korax to access the data to the Primarch project. How many Primarchs would have been trusted with that? That is a great question to ask, but I really don't think it would have been many. But what did you think about this meeting? Do you feel it was as genuine as I do? How do you think it compares to his relationship with other Primarchs? Do you feel like I do that the Emperor has a very good bond with Korax as opposed to some of the others like Angron and Lorgar? Do you think perhaps it's because Korax and Vulcan have a more human element to them? What did you guys think of this interaction? Do you feel it's as genuine as I do? Or do you like to stick to the cold Emperor? He's, he's must be pretending in his interaction with Korax. 
What about Korax's relationship with the Emperor in general? Do you feel it's as one of the more closer ones like me? It does seem like the Emperor has a more careful bonding relationship, if it were, with certain Primarchs, and they do appear to be the ones that are more in touch with the, the human element part of their personalities. But as always, leave a comment down below. I love to see your guys' versions and your opinions of the events. As always, a huge thank you to all of my subscribers for your support. It really means a lot to me. It truly, truly does. And if you're new, then please consider subscribing to help the channel continue to grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off and I'll see you guys again real soon.